Hello everyone, welcome back, my name is Arius, and today we're going to be talking about Ginkgo Bioworks and their Q2 results, as well as breaking down their acquisition of Zymogen, and looking at the details that they just released about their transaction with Bayer. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and leave any video suggestions and feedback in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start out by going over Ginkgo's Q2 results. They reported foundry revenue of 44 million, up 105% year over year, and up 110% quarter over quarter. I estimate that a little less than $5 million of this revenue came from the completion of their third milestone with Kronos for THCV. As a result, Kronos issued to Ginkgo 2.2 million shares of its stock, and with a stock price of $2.80 a share at the time of the press release, that's approximately 5 million of the total 44 million in foundry revenue this quarter, showing that while the deal was significant, it was only about 10% of this quarter's revenue. They also added 13 new cell programs to Foundry, which represents 86% growth year over year. This is my favorite metric to watch as it provides a leading indicator for how companies are fancying their chances of success on Ginkgo's platform or else they wouldn't sign up. They also posted 100 million in biosecurity revenue with a slightly stepped back but still very respectable 36% gross margin. They increased their biosecurity revenue guide by 50 million to 260 million in 2022 but with 147 million in biosecurity revenue coming in Q1 and 100 million coming this quarter, that leaves just 13 million in the guide for the remainder of 2022. The lower level of high margin biosecurity revenue will negatively impact their relatively strong adjusted EBITDA in the back few quarters of this year because there will be less gross margin from this area of the business to offset their business expenses like R&D and G&A. Speaking of adjusted EBITDA, they posted an adjusted EBITDA loss of $23 million in the second quarter and still had $1.4 billion in cash and equivalents, leaving them in a strong cash position going forward. Finally, they reiterated their foundry guide of $165 to $180 million of full year revenue and to add 60 new programs this year. That implies Ginkgo believes they will add 36 new programs in the second half of the year compared to 24 programs in the first half and report $94 million in foundry revenue in the back half of the year versus $66 million in the first. If they were able to hit those numbers, that would represent 50% growth from first half to second in foundry revenue programs and 42% growth in foundry revenue, a strong improvement heading into 2023. Now let's move on to the big news since the last time I covered Ginkgo, and that's the proposed acquisition of Zymogen. In an all-stock deal, Ginkgo has agreed to pay 5.25% of their company for Zymogen. That's roughly $210 million at today's valuations, and the deal is expected to close in Q1 of 2023. Now, let's get to the important part. Why is Ginkgo acquiring Zymogen? Well, there are a few reasons for the move. Likely the biggest one is the acceleration of foundry improvement. This deal will help improve Foundry by adding Zymergen's automation technologies to Ginkgo's platform. This will serve to lower program costs and increase the probability of success on Ginkgo's platform, which are two inextricably linked and crucial metrics for Ginkgo. They will also be adding a team of strain engineers with a unique experience in exactly what needs to be done at Ginkgo, as well as the team of engineers that built Zymergen's automation assets. This is another key of the acquisition. People who do this sort of work are few and far between, and thus it will be very valuable to add to Ginkgo's team via the acquisition of Zymogen. Zymogen has also built out some interesting learnings, and these will no doubt be added to Ginkgo's codebase to improve their capabilities. Another interesting result of the deal is that Ginkgo's management has been heavily hinting at spinning out all of Zymogen's internally developed programs into joint ventures. These joint ventures would then likely become customers of Ginkgo, while Ginkgo would still maintain significant equity for major upside. I think this is the likely outcome for any of Zymogen's programs that Ginkgo deems worthy to pursue, as management reiterated that they will not keep programs in-house, and thus they will spin the good ones and kill the others, or perhaps take them into stealth, long-term R&D to be developed later. This means that Ginkgo may get a few more customers out of this deal, as these joint ventures could help them grow even faster going forward. Let's move now to talk a bit about Zymergen's business before the acquisition so we can better understand how it will fit under Ginkgo's roof. While Zymergen is a synthetic biology company like Ginkgo, they took a very different approach. Zymergen chose to pursue many different product opportunities in many different spaces, all in-house, meaning they were responsible for commercialization and funding of the R&D. This is, of course, in sharp contrast to Ginkgo, who is an end customer who is responsible for commercialization and funding for every development project. As is to be expected in synthetic biology, many of these targets Zymogen pursued turned out to fail to be commercially viable, and this is where Zymogen has gotten themselves into trouble. They were making big bets on their own programs, leaving them little room for failure. They now have simplified their business into three segments. First, advanced materials, where they have programs in water repellency, advanced polymers, and enzymes. On their website, they are also advertising developments in additive manufacturing, agriculture, electronics, 
healthcare materials and packaging, and other emerging areas, although it's unclear what exactly of these development areas they are still pursuing. A relatively new portion of their business is drug discovery, where they intend to develop their own portfolio of owned therapeutic assets. They announced in March of this year that they were advancing potential novel hits for malaria, tuberculosis, and COVID-19. This business will fold perfectly into Ginkgo's therapeutic development business, in my opinion, with the exception of what to do with the current assets, where I think they should look for a sale. The final portion of the simplified business is their automated technology platform. The best, most advanced parts of this business will be integrated into Foundry and accelerate improvement to help keep up with Knight's Law. This is the most important function of this acquisition and is ultimately the reason for the deal, in my opinion. Moving on, Ginkgo gave more details on their planned deal to buy Bayer's West Sacramento Biologicals to improve their agricultural biologicals R&D capabilities. They announced the deal will cost Ginkgo $83 million in cash or stock at Ginkgo's option, and the deal is expected to close in the fourth quarter of 2022. As part of the deal, Join Bio will be reorganized and Bayer will become a large customer of Ginkgo's to their new Ag Biologicals division. Join Bio's team and IP will go to Ginkgo, while Bayer will get the nitrogen fixation program and the rights to certain IP specific to that program. However, Ginkgo isn't losing out altogether on the upside that this development presents as it will still get royalties from the program if successful. As I mentioned earlier, Bayer will become the largest single customer of Ginkgo with major room to expand in the future. Bayer signing up for this much work from Ginkgo majorly de-risks starting this new part of their business as they know they will not have to foot the bill for R&D and startup costs of the new business without having customers there to subsidize it. Overall, I love this transaction for Ginkgo. I think there's a ton of upside from the potential work in agricultural space. I can't wait to see what Ginkgo can do there with these new assets. Before we get to my conclusions, let's look at my notes on the conference call. The first interesting note was on biosecurity's gross margins, which have trended down quarter over quarter. Ginkgo's management blamed lower quarterly volume due to the school year ending in the quarter. When much of this volume went away in May and June, the fixed costs were not amortized over the larger amount of tests, and thus gross margins suffered. This is to be expected from a relatively inconsistent business like biosecurity that's in the very early phases of being built out. Ginkgo sees this business in the long term being built out to monitor for emerging pathogens and thus allows health authorities to counter these emerging threats as they materialize. This would obviously be a hugely valuable service, but with the real value in being able to counter large massive outbreaks, it leaves Ginkgo needing to convince governments of its value and sell it to them as it don't see individuals or even businesses investing money for something like a pathogen smoke detector or mass wastewater testing. Of course, this is a long-term play and I could see it having some value, but for now, I'm happy with the gross profit contribution that is provided for Ginkgo. Moving on, management commented on the key criticism of the Zymergen purchase, and that is their massive losses, saying they expect major run rate rationalization to bring those more in line. They also said that this acquisition would fulfill some future hiring needs, meaning the acquisition lowers Ginkgo's future additional burn, just pulling it forward slightly. They also emphasized to investors that Zymergen's team will help speed up the development of Foundry, as that team has expertise of their own that they will contribute to Ginkgo, helping improve Foundry faster. Moving on, Ginkgo's management reminded us about their ability to adjust their business to accommodate market conditions while they aren't profitable. They can do this by changing both the difficulty of the programs they take on, easier in tough markets to save on R&D money and to get payoff sooner, and more challenging programs in positive markets to go for a potential big payday by providing massive value. They could also adjust how they receive value, shifting to cash milestone payments in tougher markets or to bigger rewards downstream in more forgiving markets, such as taking equity or larger royalties. One of the more interesting things that the management team had to say was that they will have more updates on profitability in future quarters. This sounds to me like they are getting ready to announce exactly how and when they expect to get profitable, step by step, which will be great for investors' confidence in the company. However, I expect this to be more difficult for Ginkgo to lay out than other companies in similar situations because their revenue could be so variable with a huge part of their value coming from successful development of targets. They'll have to assign a probability of completion and an expected value of that completion to each program to determine when they'll be profitable as well as projecting this out into the future. But how good they are in development and how well they estimate that could swing this drastically in either direction. So I'll be interested to see how they approach this. Finally, they reiterated that they are still expecting to hit a few big milestones at the end of the year. And I am not only excited for the revenue implications, but also to hopefully hear what they have developed, as this is what really gives me optimism for the company. Finally, for my conclusions, I think Ginkgo is in a strong position going forward. They have a strong balance sheet with roughly a third of their market cap in cash, a massive opportunity ahead of them in leveraging biology to improve humanity, 
and from an investor's perspective, are now at a more attractive entry point as they've gotten smacked around in the recent market turmoil. Management is being and needs to continue to be smart with the way they handle their cash runway to ensure their survival to profitability and to ensure their flexibility in what programs they can take on or acquisitions they can make. However, while they are in a solid position now, what they are trying to do is insanely hard and that drastically increases the risks associated with the company. Think about it like this. Tesla took a Herculean effort to get this far, where imminent failure isn't a consideration, and engineering biology is probably less predictable than engineering atoms. So while Ginkgo is doing just fine right now, we need to keep in mind that this could go south at any moment and stay vigilant. As for the two acquisitions, I like them both. I appreciate how much upside there could be by getting more heavily into the agricultural sector in the Bayer deal for a relatively small expenditure, but I especially like the Zymogen transaction because it will accelerate Foundry and codebase development which is the most important factor for Ginkgo's long-term success. As for what I'm doing with Ginkgo, I'm still adding to my position as recently as last week, and I will continue adding more aggressively if it goes lower. Ginkgo currently makes up about 2.7% of my portfolio, or about 10% ex-Tesla, with a cost basis of $5.42 a share. Thanks for watching. What do you think of Ginkgo Bioworks and their acquisition of Zymogen? Where does Ginkgo stand in your portfolio, and at what cost basis? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and have a great rest of your day.